Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte Vegas Edition. I'm Corey Knockreiner and I'm here with uh, Marc Laliberté, yeah. my threat researcher. We've had two full days of DEF CON, man. And by the way, if you haven't been to DEF CON, it's a pretty laid back conference. Uh, we made it through most of it one day to go, but I say <laughs> cheers, cheers to two days down of DEF CON. So anyways, today we just want to give you a quick recap of some of the stuff we saw at DEF CON. We did a lot of things. We launched a successful CTF badge conference. Hugely successful. Now, how many people at the end? Uh, 782 as of right now, That I think. is nuts. And by the way, <laughs> I, I think, while we haven't announced it, I think someone has officially won in our minds. They cracked my evil puzzle finally. Yeah, cool. Well, why don't we jump right in? I'll, I'll start it off with you. What's a couple good talks you saw, or at least one good talk you saw yeah. this week? So I think my favorite one was actually the last one we went to today. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we both, both ended it. up at the same one. And it was called Inside the Fake Science Factory. And it was a talk put on by Dr. Cindy Poppins, Dr. Dade Murphy, and Dr. Edgar Munchausen. So Dr. Dade Murphy, actually, he's one of the volunteers that runs DEF CON's Call for Paper panels. Yep, exactly. Uh, yeah. He calls himself a so reform hacker. So if you ever hacker. submit, you might have to go through this guy. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he, he uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, he did not approve on his own paper. Yes, he, made he, he stood that. back and let other yeah. people check his paper out. Uh, but Dr. Poppins and Dr. Uh, Manchusen, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that, are actually journalists from Germany. Germany. And this all started when Dr. Murphy, the reformed hacker, uh, had done some research and he wanted to go discuss it. And he went and found this political science um, conference, conference yeah. that looked real in, uh, I think it was uh, Denmark, I believe? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and so he went, he paid his money, registered, showed up, and he actually, he showed us a picture of the room. It was a couple tables. Tiny. Nine or ten people in there. Didn't they say he had 20 minutes, like, when they signed him up, but yep. they only let him talk for five minutes? Exactly. So he felt uh, very badly about this, yeah. and he actually went back to try and get his money back, and he had to go prove to his credit card company uh, this thing called predatory publishing. And yeah, I'd not heard of that. So predatory publishing, it's actually groups that are... Like, they, they, you pay money to publish something, but they look like scientific journals? Exactly. And that's what this whole talk was on, really, whereas uh, after this whole ordeal, he went and pointed out to uh, Dr. Poppins and Dr. Manchesson that there were a lot of Germans on the on the list for some of these conferences, and so yeah. they began an investigation of their own. Yeah. Uh, they did so, so they found one company that they talked fairly heavily about, Wasset. The uh, World Academy of Science, Engineering, and Technology yep. sounds like it could be something official. Uh, they actually ran it. They teamed up with um, Maltigo. Yeah, so Maltigo is a very, very cool tool that tracks connections, both digital and social. You use it all the time for like forensic research to try yep. to figure out to uh, attribute basically malware or different attacks. And they used Maltigo, and they were actually able to locate who they think were the uh, the owners of this whole. And by the franchise. way, they owned a ton of other conferences besides Waset too. It was fascinating how they found them. It turns yeah. out because it was hosted on Cloudflare, Maltigo, it seemed like it reached a dead end. Yeah. Uh, but they checked. Uh, uh, shared cookies between one domain and a few other domains and then some of those domains they were able then to do more investigation find, more. find whoever the owner was it ended up being a guy and his dad yeah uh, they make something like four and a half million dollars off of this basically hosting these fake conferences and long story short this was just like one group there's tons and tons of these what was strange is the big universities researchers at like MIT and the University of Wisconsin and other big universities all are submitting papers. They're get, kind of getting tricked by this. Yeah, and to prove their point, the two journalists actually submitted their own paper. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, they generated their scientific paper using a computer algorithm. Yeah, I think and there's it was, a link at MIT where you can actually have this done automatically. And it was pure gibberish to like anyone. It was a technology paper, so maybe if you're not hilarious. familiar with technology, you'd be like, oh, okay, I don't understand that word, but it might be real. But to us, hacker nerds out there it was you read the headline and it's all it was sh and grins uh, oh i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> i'll beep that all right uh <laughs> so and to further prove their point they actually went and presented on this paper yeah. and they read it line for line and it was just gibberish and they ended up winning the best presenter award <laughs> for at this conference given i think by the sun was who gave them the award the sad thing by the way this does have a very sad thing because you know there are p drug companies that are selling fake drugs to cure cancer right. that part of the way they establish legitimacy is by actually publishing papers in these seemingly real scientific publications. And the problem with scientific publications, there are legitimate ones, but 
other papers will see this, think it's real, and cite it, and that just continues to add legitimacy to something that's pure crap. It's not real at all. Exactly. And they even shared there's a German journalist who died of cancer, and in her book she was talking about hoping how this drug was a cure, and it was all snake oil. So it does have a very serious you know, a point to it. Yeah, I felt like this was a good talk in the age we're in right now with so much attention on fake news. Yeah, and if you think about how people are maybe not changing votes, but maybe influencing people. Sounds like one of our the predictions. Internet. Absolutely, pretty scary. So that was my favorite talk, how about you? So I have to get all feelies on you and I have to go nostalgia. I was surprised, I didn't know this, but the last talk I went to on the first day was a talk given by the folks from Loft Heavy Industries. And if you don't know this, these are a group of basically hacker kids from Baltimore that they literally found a warehouse loft and they all shacked up together and called themselves Loft Industries. Whoa! <laughs> Magic! <laughs> Illusion! <laughs> what happened? Well, uh, phones in hot sun don't work to, uh, well together with video recording. <laughs> so I think when we cut off, we were in different sides of the chair. But I think I was talking about a cool presentation <laughs> where I listened to, you know, the crew from Loft, Loft Heavy Industries. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of the younger hackers may not know this, but these were all big name guys, you know, Mudge, uh, people like Dill Dog, people like uh, uh, Space Rogue. Or, or Weld Pond, or Jan, or, and by the way, this is actually a correction. I think in uh, either our video or our podcast, too, the 443 podcast, we've been talking about badges. And I think I unfairly credited Lost Boy with the first one. Lost Boy made a ton of badges, but the first guy was Joe, King, was Joe Kingpin Grand, or Joe Grand. So Joe Grand, a hardware hacker, one of the first big hardware hackers that came to DEF CON. Oh. So these were all kind of my peeps. Back when I was your age, these were the guys I watched and respected in the hacking industry. And by the way, in 1998, they went to Congress and they testified to Congress on computer security and how it was such a big deal. You know, Mudge talked about how he could take down the internet in 30 days, which seemed like hyperbole to some of the, hyperbole, I should say, not hyperbole, to, to some of the congressmen. But with some of his BGP attacks, he could do that. So it was fun getting, you know, their take on things. They're all older guys now, some even older than me. You know, Mudge works for DARPA. He's kind of being a fed. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, they Kingpin, got him. he was like a spot the fed guy. He was always spotting the fed, and now <laughs> some of these guys are fed themselves. Uh, but they really have a great, you know, they had great takeaways. They talked about how hacking's getting harder. You know, there's a lot of the things are the same in information security. You know, it's interesting. IoT has a lot of old school hacks they're used to. But overall, they talked about companies like Microsoft, Apple. You know, there's things like ASLR and, and uh, DEP, which is data execution protection, and all these mechanisms that make it harder to hack. So it's actually harder, and the kids that actually get past some of these protections are, are really skilled hackers. So it was great for me just to get a little feel, uh, feelies and nostalgia and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I enjoyed that a lot. Cool. So why don't we end and do one more presentation? I'll throw it to you, but I think this is one we both saw. Yeah, uh, and you actually had a great segue there in how things are getting harder to hack. The last presentation we saw was a, a fun one in that it was uh, a gentleman who had actually hacked the Nintendo 3DS. Yep. He's not the first to do it. No. Uh, but mm -hmm. he definitely went through a really complex route and a yeah. really interesting chain of exploits in order to pwn the entire system. Yep. And I don't know this, and when we talk about the chain, I think even some of the early jailbreaks that just allowed homebrew execution or even piracy, which, by the way, he doesn't support, don't necessarily need the full level that he got, and yet he got all the way down. To, yeah. yeah. So he went through a chain where first he got code execution on it, then he elevated his privileges so he could execute privileged system calls. Yeah. And then from there, he attacked the uh, the kernel code, and then yeah. from there he tacked another more secure kernel code and honed the entire system to the point where he could run whatever, whatever else he, he wanted. wanted. On. And one of the things I've talked about in my articles before, and I think we've talked about too, is consoles are among the most secure platforms, in my opinion, out there. And it's really, I think it's driven by piracy. You know, ever since there's been consoles, there's been kids trying to steal games. So they were one of the first people to implement, you know, trusted platform modules, secure chips on their, their actual SOC. They're, they use secure boot. And so part of this talk was talking about how, you know, the home application, uh, normal 
normal apps like games are separated from the home application, which is separated from the A11 syscalls, uh, which is separated from, then there's the A9 chip. There's two different CPUs. The A11 can only do some things. You actually need access to the A9 to actually get to the crypto it's keys. huge amounts of it's segregation. It's just all kinds of segregation there that he had to get past. And the way he did it was really novel and cool. Yeah, yeah. it was a really cool talk and uh, very technical, which is something I like to see. Absolutely. So it was a great DEF CON, and uh, besides maybe the temperature burning out my phone, <laughs> I think it's something like 108 out there yesterday. Fair, I, right? I yeah, it's fair. fair. I think your weather app called it fair. That is nuts. <laughs> Anyways, with one last toast, I think we'll call it a, a Black Hat DEF CON show. Thanks for doing the video with me, and Cheers. thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed these stories. Thanks for around. watching. Oh,